The 10th anniversary of the war in Iraq has many wondering if the country is better off today than it was a decade ago. Can you walk down the street of Iraq and feel safe, or is there the threat of a car bomb exploding around you? RT International correspondent Lucy Kafanov is on the ground in Erbil, Iraq, to tell us what she's seeing. Hi, Lucy. So can you give us a sense of what life is like on a day-to-day -day basis in Iraq? Well, one of the things that strikes you first uh, driving through Iraq, we spent most of the day in the northern city of Kirkuk, which was one of the most dangerous places at the height of the sectarian strife there, is the checkpoints, massive checkpoints almost everywhere you go. Iraqis aren't too free to move around because of the security situation, which continues to be quite unsafe for them. Uh, as we were driving through Kirkuk, one thing that I noticed, though, was, you know, daily life does continue despite the levels of violence. We saw children out on the street, people out in cafes. We actually arrived to Kirkuk just as the news of that massive uh, series of car explosions and shootings and bombings uh, came out uh, that took place in Baghdad. People were aware of that, and yet they didn't really let that stop them from carrying out their daily life. At the same time, what we heard from Iraqi after Iraqi is that their daily routine is determined by fear of the security situation. They can't necessarily go to certain markets because those might be considered unsafe. Neighborhoods have become much more fractured, whereas at one point, Iraqis used to live together in, in, in more harmony. Now the sectarian divisions, the ethnic divisions, the religious divisions are much more prominent. People are uh, much more suspicious uh, of their neighbors, which is something that didn't used to be the case. At least that is what we heard from the Iraqis that we spoke to there. And of course, the infamous blast walls, that's something that definitely strikes you as you're driving and walking through parts of those cities. So I think visually, you do sort of get a sense that this is a country that still has quite recovered from war but at the same time considering that Iraqis have been in a state of war for almost a decade uh, in some sad ways uh, the instability has become a part of normal daily life after the series of bombings that happened just yesterday over 60 people dead Lucy is there a renewed sense of fear there uh, in Iraq or are people just used to it at this point I think it's both. Uh, I think, unfortunately, people have grown used to it. Uh, it. It's certainly a sense of fear for foreigners entering the country. But you know, one one of one of the well, the things that 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 you sort of hear constantly is that people do feel that life perhaps has improved for some, but most feel like their lives are defined again by the security and the instability. Uh, it, it's quite mixed. You almost don't know how to get your mind around the fact that, you know, these car bombs are going off. Uh, in fact, actually, when we were in Kirkuk, we heard from the local officials there that there was two explosions, small explosions that took place there. Uh, but yet, what are people supposed to do? They have to somehow continue with their life, and so they do, but at their peril. All right. Now, how, how are Iraqis treating foreigners? Uh, Americans in particular. It kind of varies on where you are. For instance, we're in Erbil right now. It's an area that uh, in the semi-autonomous region of Kurdistan, which is probably the only place in Iraq that has really benefited and improved and seen conditions uh, drastically change for the better since the war. Uh, however, across most of the country, uh, there's a lot of suspicion of foreigners. It's not that Iraqis don't necessarily like Americans. Most Iraqis probably have no problems with Westerners as people. But considering the, the, the devastating impacts of the war that had been launched by the U.S. Uh, in, in, in uh, association with coalition partners, there's a lot of suspicion about what Westerners are doing there. Certain neighborhoods that you walk into, it's really not okay to, you know, walk in with your American gear and try to uh, not blend in with the people because you'll instantly be noticed uh, as a foreigner. But, you know, the, 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 the sad thing is that it's not just about the foreigners. I think there's a growing sense of suspicion among neighbors, and that's really one of the things, the tragedy uh, things, uh, legacies, I suppose, of, of this uh, decade of war, occupation, and sectarian strife. Mm. And billions of dollars have gone towards rebuilding Iraq. And we know now, following a report, that a lot of that money was wasted and that a lot of these projects were abandoned. So, I mean, being there on the ground, do you get a sense that a lot of construction and rebuilding is, is taking place? Or do you see a lot of bombed out buildings and ruins? 
Here in Iraqi Kurdistan, in fact, the opposite is happening. This is, again, a, a prosperous region. There is construction, but that's because there's a massive oil boom, and the oil wealth has fueled uh, a, a, an immensely popular and wonderful economic surge. But across most of the country, that's a drastic difference. Kirkuk is just 45 minutes away, and it's a completely different scenario. There's a lot of uh, poverty that continues to plague the country. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, for instance, problems with the infrastructure. Drinking clean drinking water isn't necessarily available. Power outages uh, continue to plague the capital of Baghdad as well as parts of the country. We're pretty lucky here in Erbil, but that's not the case for most Iraqis. And that, again, is another tragic leftover legacy of the war. Mm. Lucy, thanks so much for shedding some light on what Iraq is like on the ground today. That was RT Inter International Correspondent Lucy Kafanov on the ground in Erbil, Iraq.